What is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? Part 3. Sit back, relax, and soak it all in. If you like what you hear, hit subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your crew. Account 1. Fell asleep in the bath once as a teenager. Woke up in a darkened version of the room with the water line just below my nose. Couldn't move, couldn't make noise. Tried to call for my dad. Got a mumble out. Dad arrived, but as he opened the door and stooped in, he seemed to be about nine feet tall, wrapped in ragged towels and had a mummified face. He reached out towards my chest as if to suck the life out of me, like you said, like a dementor. It felt like the creature was definitely my father for some reason, despite no one being home. Thankfully, this has only happened to me once. I don't think I could deal with it being a regular thing like it is for some people. Account 2. When I was about 15 years old, I lived in a house that was about 120 years old. The whole thing was huge, but was divided up into apartments in the 50s. The apartment my mom and I lived in had this really long and narrow bathroom, and at the end of it was this closet space. Well, about a week after we moved in, we unlocked it. With a skeleton key and everything, and both my mother and I immediately got really sick. Like bending over the bathtub and toilet, puking our guts out. Our dog wouldn't go near it. Just walking into the bathroom sent chills and goosebumps up your spine. After a month of avoiding it, I got fed up and decided to try it again when my mom was at work. I turned the key and went inside. The windows had been painted over and there were old, rusty nails sticking out of the walls everywhere. Super weird even without the chilly draft that was in there, despite it being summer. I looked around for a minute to see if I could find anything really crazy to show my mom later because old houses sometimes have hidden treasures, and then the door slammed behind me and locked itself, which could only be done with the old as shit key that was in my hand. Scariest shit ever. There was zero light, it was cold as shit, and my dog was losing his effing mind. The scariest part was the key wouldn't work at all. I tried probably 30 times to unlock it to no avail. Every other time before and after the incident, it worked just fine. Finally, after about 30 minutes of being locked in there and crying my eyes out, my mom came home and called over a neighbor to get the door down. The handle would not give, so they ended up having to take it off its hinges. We ended up living there for about a year, and every time I went in that bathroom, I'd avoid even looking at that closet. I get creeped out just thinking about it. Ah! Count three. This happened three times with three different people. I grew up in a two-story house in the Philippines. Upstairs, there was a huge playroom and four bedrooms. When I was around 11 years old, my babysitter and I were hanging out in the playroom. She went to the bathroom, and I got bored, so I went downstairs to check out the fridge. I heard her come out of the bathroom, and she started screaming my name. After the third time, she stopped. I thought she figured out that I was downstairs. After a few minutes, I saw her coming down the stairs. As she looked at me, she froze and just stared at me. I asked her what's wrong, and she said she just saw me in the playroom before she went downstairs. She was really freaked out about it, and I don't know, I used to not believe in these things, so I just laughed at her. The second time it happened, I was probably 16. I was hanging out in my brother's room because it had the fastest internet. Then I heard my six-year-old brother, I have two brothers calling me and looking around for me. I didn't answer back and just waited for him to find me. I saw him go into my room, and then he got quiet. I thought he was looking for something and just found it. As he was walking out of my room, he saw me in my brother's room, and he just froze and stared like my babysitter. I asked him what's wrong, and he said, Why are there two of you? That's when I freaked out and ran to my mom's room. She laughed at us, but I remember sleeping in her room that night. The last time it happened was when I was 20. My parents went on vacation with my youngest brother, so my other siblings and I had to stay at my grandparents' house. The first night they were away, my sister and I decided to go home and get more clothes. We were both in my room because she likes to borrow some of my clothes, and I told her that I'm going to take a shower. That's when she left and went to her room to pack more clothes. I went to the bathroom and started brushing my teeth. As I was about to get in the shower, my sister walked into the bathroom and she looked at me so weirdly. Her face turned pale, so I asked her what's wrong. She said she went back to my room and was talking to me, but then she had to pee, so she went to the bathroom and found me there. We both looked at each other, grabbed our stuff, and left. I still don't know why or what it is, but it still creeps me out when I think about it.
Account four. My story was more like a glitch in the matrix, but still was pretty creepy. I'm really skeptical when it comes to various paranormal activities, but one thing happened a couple of years ago that I can't rationally explain. So my father was picking me up from the airport. We got into the car, started driving home. Then I remembered I left my small bag in the airport toilet, so we went back, parked our car at the guarded multi-level parking. We locked it, obviously, even if we didn't. It locks itself after 30 seconds. When we came back, we found a tiny basket with raspberries in it on the driver's seat. My father was sitting there four minutes ago, obviously. We had no idea how the hell did they appear there. He didn't buy them? I didn't bring them with me. There was only one entrance to the parking, guarded by the parking guard, and he said nobody entered or left when we were gone. This story is now legendary among my family, and nobody can explain it. Sorry for my English, not my first language, obviously. Out five. My wife and I were asleep one night, and I woke up suddenly and felt like someone was at the foot of our bed. I opened my eyes and saw a woman standing there who looked just like this at the foot of my bed. She slowly turned towards me and just stared. Not being fully awake yet, my brain couldn't get fully afraid, but was instead curious and confused as to why there was another person in the room. I sat up and reached toward the woman, trying to figure out if she was real or not. When my hand reached her face, she disappeared. My wife woke up at this point and asked me what I was doing. All I could say was that I thought I saw something. We both laid back down facing each other and closed our eyes. Not a minute later, we both heard this guttural roar, growl that sounded like a mix between a bear, lion, and howler monkey emanating from behind our headboard. There's nothing behind that wall since it's an outside second story wall. She immediately began screaming and I searched the house from top to bottom. We never found out what made that noise. It took us a while to sleep in our bedroom again. Count six. Twelve years ago, my brother died, and for that whole first year, a lot of super weird shit happened to our family. The only conclusion I can come to, and I do really believe this, was that he was trying to contact us. A week after his funeral, my mom was home by herself, and the phone rang. This was about 2 p.m. The caller ID said that it was my brother's house, so she figured it was my sister-in-law. Mom answered, and when she said hello, there was no sound on the other end, and no one answered. She said hello, again, and still no answer. Then the call disconnected. She waited till about 6 p.m. when my sister-in-law came home from work, and she called her to ask if she had come home from work and called her earlier. My sister-in-law said no. She asked if the kids had come home early. My sister-in-law asked my niece and nephew if they had come home to call Gran in the middle of the day, and neither of them had. They were in school the whole time until the end of the day. The phone was mounted to the kitchen wall, and the receiver was on the hook, so it is not like the dog knocked it over and accidentally stepped on speed dial. We think it was my brother making contact to let my mom know he was around. My sister-in-law is an amazing cook, and she has many kitchen utensils and tools that are very specialized, that you only use for one thing. For example, a certain knife you would only use for fish or some such thing. Over the course of that first year he was gone, Many of the utensils that my sister-in-law would use to make my brother's favorite dishes started to disappear. She did not loan them out. No one borrowed them. I asked a friend of mine who was really into the supernatural about it. She said, does your sister-in-law believe in ghosts and such? I said, no. She is super no-nonsense and really does not believe. She said, that is the problem. He is trying to get her attention. He wants her to talk to him. He misses her. He is trying to let her know that he is still around. A year after my brother died, my dad's lady friend's father died. And a year after that, she was still having a lot of problems coping with her dad's death, so she went to a psychic to see if she could make contact with him. So the psychic tells her all the things she wants to hear. Yes, of course, your dad is in the room, etc., etc. Stuff that anyone could say to her. Then the psychic says, your dad is here but there is a much younger man with him also. He is very tall and thin, with dark hair and glasses. Normally, Dad's lady friend would have thought of my brother, but she was having such a hard time coping with the loss of her dad that she just did not make the connection to my brother at that exact moment. So she said, that does not sound like anyone I know. The psychic said, who is James? Dad's lady friend said, he is my companion. The psychic said, 
The younger man has a message for James. He said, please tell my dad that I am okay. She realized it was my brother trying to get a message to my dad. The psychic knew nothing about my brother's death. Dad's lady friend was strictly there to talk about her father. Two months after my brother died, I was kind of having a really bad day about his death. It was still very soon, and I was still grieving. I went out to Target in my neighborhood to run some errands, Sunday morning, very early, right when they opened, and on this particular day, I had my hair up in a ponytail. I was going up the escalator to the second level, and suddenly I felt someone tug my ponytail, just in a friendly manner, like you would tap someone on the shoulder. There was one girl I worked with who lived in my neighborhood, and I thought that early on a Sunday in this neighborhood, it could only be her. So I turned around, expecting to see my co-worker behind me with a big grin on her face. And I was alone. I was alone on the escalator. There was no one else on there with me, and the store was still mostly empty. Nine months after he died, I was in bed sleeping, and it had to be around 3 a.m. or so. Suddenly, I felt someone sit on the edge of my mattress. I actually felt the weight of this person sit down. I felt the edge of the mattress dip. I gasped because naturally I figured someone had broken into my bedroom and was going to attack me or something. I was laying on my stomach, and before I could roll over and see who it was, I felt this person lean up against me, very gently, like they were trying to hug me without waking me up, and rest their cheek on my hair. I could not see anything, but at that point I bolted upright and screamed and snapped on the light. There was no one there. You guys, I swear on my life, to this day, I could feel this person lightly hugging me. I could feel their cheek against my hair. I felt the mattress dip down when they sat. It has been 12 years since he died, and to this day there has been no way to explain any of this. Sorry this was so long for my first post, but when I saw the topic, I could not help but register so I could post. Account 7. I posted this a long time ago. But when I was younger, my mom was dating this guy, who we will call JB, and after a few months, he invited my mom, me, and my brother to go with him and his son, about my age, out to his lake house for the weekend. It was right on Lake Michigan, but up in a more secluded area, which was pretty awesome. Well, we got up there, and for one, I already felt really creeped out. It was a smaller two, maybe three if you count the really big attic, story house that had the living room, dining room, kitchen on the first floor and had two bedrooms on the second floor. His grandfather had helped to build the place with his, the grandfather's dad, and then he lived there for most of his life, working as a tailor in the nearby town. We went up to the attic to get some beach toys because that is where JB kept all of that stuff, so he did not have to haul it every time he went out there. Well, when we went up to the attic, I noticed in the corner, covered in some dust and cobwebs, about eight mannequins, some just upper torsos and some full body. Not too out of the ordinary, considering a tailor had lived there. JB's son and I slept down in the living room on the couch since there were no more beds, and near midnight-ish, I heard one of the stairs squeak a few times. Figuring it was my mom coming to check to make sure we were asleep, I told his son to be quiet and quickly turned the TV off and hid under the covers. After not hearing any noise for a few minutes, I looked out from under the covers and saw three of the mannequins moving around in the kitchen. Like their body parts were not moving, but they were sliding around the kitchen. I swore I was dreaming, but was so terribly frightened, I hid back under the covers with a small yelp, and then heard the dragging on the floor coming closer and peeked out seeing one of them just a few feet from the couch. I hid back under the covers and shut my eyes tight, hoping it would go away. The next morning, I got up and tried not to think about it, really. Really hoping it was just a bad dream. But when we went back up to the attic to put the beach stuff back, the mannequins were in different spots and were not covered in cobwebs anymore. Do not believe me if you do not want to. But it happened. And I have been scared shitless of mannequins ever since. Count eight. This is ongoing and only happens when I am home alone. About five months ago, I got home from work at about 10 p.m., and to enter the living room, you have to walk past the basement stairs. I did so without actually looking straight down them, but had full vision of them. There was a huge brown head at the bottom of the stairs, opening and closing its mouth. I took about five steps past the stairs before it caught up with me, and then I was scared that it was a person in my basement. I called a friend of mine to come over. 
She did, and we did not find anything down there. All the doors were locked, nothing had been moved. A few months after that, I was watching TV upstairs before work. I heard a noise like something had been thrown across the room in the basement. I froze for a second, looked around, and saw that all my pets were in the same room as me. I called my friend again, told her to stay on the line as I checked out the basement. All the doors were locked, nothing was moved. I have heard that noise. It sounds like someone is throwing something large and heavy at the wall about five more times and still have not figured out what it is. I have not seen the face again, but I always feel someone watching me when I am in the kitchen, which is at the top of the stairs. Account 9. Stationed in Erlangen, Germany between 1990 and 1993, but lived off post in Nuremberg. Lived in a condominium on Dusseldorfer Strasse with my then wife and two daughters. My oldest daughter, three years old at the time, would often come running into our bedroom crying and complaining of a monkey in her room. She didn't have any toys of monkeys or apes, so it was kind of baffling to understand her fear. Their bedroom and ours were across from each other in the hallway, and we could see directly into their bedroom from ours. One late night, sitting up in bed reading, I caught movement out of my right side. Thinking one of my kids may be up, I walked to their room, but they were both asleep. I went back to my bed and book, and again I noticed movement. So I glanced over to their room from my bed, and that's when I saw what appeared to be the outline of a child as it walked into the bedroom where my daughters were sleeping. I launched out of my bed and covered the distance between my room and theirs in maybe four leaps. Nothing. My daughters were both sleeping. This was mid-tour for me, so for the remaining year and a half, we all slept in our room. Account 10. One winter night, I took a walk to a park in my town and saw a guy sleeping on the ground. Even though it was very cold out, I didn't think to call an ambulance. I had never seen him before, so I just kind of stood there and watched the guy sleep for a moment and moved on. A week later, I read in the papers that he died from the cold that night. The paper said his name and that he was homeless for a while. I felt really guilty but eventually forgot about him. A few months later, I get a letter in the mail from a local hospital addressed to him. It turns out that he used my address when he was at the hospital for some reason. I turned white. Account 11. So when I was 13 or early 14, I was walking home from the library to the bus stop. A bit away from where my stop was, I saw an old man lying on the grass like he had fallen there. It was right next to a skate park, but nobody was paying attention to him. I went up to him, crouched down, and asked if he was okay. No, he replied. Do you need medical help? I asked. Yes. Do you want me to call 911? I want to make sure you're okay. Yes. I ran and asked to borrow a phone from someone at the skate park to call 911. The dispatcher sent an ambulance, and they told me to keep him aware and awake. Hi, my name is Nature Spawn. I just called the ambulance, so they will get here soon, okay? What do you like to do? Looking back, I imagine I looked a bit funny. A little 13-year-old girl with dyed blue hair, a trench coat, and steampunk goggles crouching next to a guy lying on the ground. Anyway, the ambulance came, I said goodbye, and I headed to the bus stop. While I was walking towards it, I started getting harassed by two older smoking people for bothering homeless people and being a disgrace to humanity. I suffered from low self-confidence at that point in time, so tears were starting to gather in my eyes. Eventually, I just walked away, and after a moment's thought, I flipped them off as I walked away. Looking back at this, I'm really glad something like what you just wrote did not happen to me. Account 12. I worked at a small-town pizza shop during my winter breaks in college. I was good friends with a married couple who picked up occasional shifts to supplement the income from their regular jobs. One time, we were swapping spooky stories, and they told me about one that had happened just a week earlier. The wife had been spending the evening visiting her sister way out in the country when a heavy snowstorm rolled in. The roads were slippery and visibility was terrible as she was driving home. At one point, it was so bad she didn't even see the railroad crossing until the lights started flashing and the gate almost crashed onto her hood. Luckily, she managed to skid to a stop barely in front of the tracks right before the train came roaring by. When she got home, she was still shaken up and told her husband about the close call with the train and how the gate had almost crashed on the hood of her car. The next morning, her husband told her he wanted to show her something. 
and they went driving back towards her sister's house until they got to the railroad crossing. All that was there was an old-fashioned crossing sign. There were no lights and no gates. 